Are you in a small church that doesn't have a dedicated human being to just mix the live stream, but you still want to have really good audio on the live stream? The answer is yes, this video is just for you. In the previous video, I showed you how to set up a completely independent live stream mix using Reaper and I showed you all the buttons to press and things to do. And if you still haven't watched that video or don't know how to do these things, I highly suggest you click here. And I shared with you a really cool trick that allows you to control the crowd microphones and reverb of Reaper from the mixer. But that requires you to remember to do these things. I noticed from the past few months, if I don't remember to mute the crowd and reverb during the sermon, other volunteers just forget to do it, even if they know how to do it. And even I sometimes forget to do it. And five minutes into the sermon, I remember that the ambient mics and reverb is still on. And then I go and mute it. It's kind of distracting. So I thought, what if there's a way to make Reaper automatically mute the crowd mics and the reverb during the preaching or reading of scripture or prayer, and then unmute those again during worship. I'm going to share with you exactly how I did that. You can see now there is sound coming from these microphones, but there's nothing coming from this group. So these are muted in the mix. But as soon as the instruments start, you can see there is sound with the crowd and the reverb. And I'll remove these. I just removed all the mics and all the instruments from the main mix so you can see that it's just the reverb and the crowd. If I mute the instruments, these get slowly muted and reverb also. And unmute the instruments. Okay, everything comes back. Let me put these back in the mix. And let me show you. And here we go. The instruments are not playing. The crowd slowly fades out. And here we go. I don't have anything from here. So here's the idea. I'm still using the gate the same way I explained in the other video. But instead of having pink noise coming from the mixer to trigger the gate, I'm using the sound of the instruments within Reaper. If any instrument at all is playing, I have the sound of the crowd microphones and the reverb in the live stream. If no instrument is playing at all, the crowd and the reverb are muted in the live stream. And I have it set up in a way that even if we are syncopating in the music, all of us are stopping for a little while and then continuing, the gate doesn't just quickly close and open and have this really unpleasant sound. It will wait for some time. No one is playing at all. Then it will close completely. And that also allows me to have the reverb louder in the mix because previously I had it really quiet just in case we forget to mute it that it wouldn't be too distracting. Now I can have a really good mix and have enough ambience in it to make it sound natural without having to worry about it. It takes care of itself. So if you like that idea, let me show you exactly what buttons to press and how to do it. First of all, I want to have a gate on the crowd microphones and I'm going to put that not on the individual channels, but on the group because these channels are going to that group and that is what's going to the mix. So you click in an empty spot right here and you search for regate that one, double click on it. And in the detector input, you select auxiliary input. So the gate isn't looking at the signal of the channel that it's inserted on. It's listening to a different signal coming from somewhere else. So how do I give the gate that signal that will be the trigger? I just go to that channel, click and hold on the routing button, which is this little square and drag it all the way to that gate and then release. Now I created a send from that channel to the channel that the gate is inserted on. And here's where it gets a little bit confusing if you're doing these with many different channels. In Reaper, any track can be multi-channel. It's not like other DAWs or mixing consoles where you have a mono track or stereo track. So my crowd track can have one or two or five or 10 or however many different signals coming onto distinct channels on that track. Track. That's why I recommend to always check the amount of channels on your track by clicking on the routing button. And here you can see I have six channels. I don't need that. This is only a stereo sound. So I just need two channels for that track. However, because I'm using a side chain and I'm sending another signal to it to trigger the gate, I will need two more channels that are distinct and separate from the sound of that track. So it was six. I will make it just four because I need two for stereo sound of that track and two for the stereo sound that is coming from somewhere else. And you can see that on the crowd track, I'm receiving sound from the music track, which contains all the instruments. But that's not working yet because if I play this 
and I mute the instruments, I still have the crowd sound. I shouldn't have that. It should automatically mute it. The gate is listening to the wrong channel, so it's not working. Although I'm sending the music group to the crowd gate, it's on the wrong channel. So I'll click on the routing button of that crowd track. And here you can see where it's receiving signal from. So I have received from track one, which is called music, is coming into the crowd track on channels five and six. But I'm not using channels five and six. So I'll click on this little arrow and I'll select three, four. I still have sound from the crowd. That's still wrong, but I'm sending it to the correct channel, right? There's one more thing that you have to check. In the gate plugin itself, you have to go to the in out right here and you see you have main input left right and auxiliary input left right. What did we set here? We decided that the trigger will be auxiliary inputs. So let me look at this. There's nothing assigned to the auxiliary inputs. So I'll click on track channel three and four and assign them to auxiliary left and right. And now it should work. It still doesn't work. <laughs> and that's just because we haven't set the settings of the gate yet. It's still at minus infinity, so I'll raise the threshold a little bit. Now let's try. Mute. Here we go. I don't have sound anymore from the crowd. Unmute the music. It's working now, finally. Okay, but let's tweak the settings of the gate a little bit because I don't want it to immediately close and immediately open in case the music stops for a little while doing syncopation or things like this. I don't want the gate to open and close and open and close. So let me give it a 10 millisecond attack time. The attack time is all the way down. As soon as it hears a sound, any sound, it just immediately opens. And you may want that for drums or very percussive things, but for crowd mics and reverb, I want it to ease in a little bit. I don't want it to abruptly just come in. So if I increase the attack time, it takes more time to fully open. It's like a fade in. The more I increase the attack time, the slower it opens. I found 10 milliseconds to be a good number, so that's what I'll put right here in the attack. And then I want it to hold. The hold is how long the gate waits before it starts closing. The gate opened, there's no sound anymore to keep it open, it waits for a while, it still remains open even if there's no sound for that amount of time, and then it starts closing. So you can see on this little envelope, if I decrease the hold, it will just open and when there's no sound anymore coming to it, it will start closing immediately. If I increase the hold, it will open and then even if the sound stops coming to it, it will wait for that amount of time before it starts to close. So let me increase it to the maximum, which is one second. 1000 milliseconds is one second. So let's say we're playing and we stop for one second it doesn't do anything it remains open and then after that second it starts closing and finally the release time after the hold finishes how long does it take to fully close? So if I increase the release time, it takes that amount of second from when it starts closing until it's fully closed. If I decrease it, it closes immediately. I don't want that. So I'll also increase the release time all the way up, which is five seconds. When we play anything on the instrument, the gate will take 10 milliseconds to fully open and let the sound of the crowd microphones come through. And if we stop playing, it stays open for a whole second and then it takes five seconds to fully close. So from the time we stop playing, there's a full six seconds before the gate fully closes. And this sounds like a very smooth, very slow fade out. So in case we play again, it will open again and it will not be distracting. You will not notice like, oh, what happened? Something is muting and unmuting. You will not hear that. So let's do the same thing for the reverb, but more quickly now. Insert a gate onto the reverb and select auxiliary inputs for the detector input and go to the music group, hold the routing button and drag it onto the gate. Now go into the routing of the reverb and make sure it's the correct amount of channels per track. This made it six, I just want four channels. So let's make it four channels. And then I will go into that gate plugin and into the in out and I will assign track three and four to auxiliary left and right. And I'll increase the attack to 10 milliseconds and the hold all the way up to one second and the release all the way up to five seconds and I'll increase the threshold. Now this, in my own finding, I like to put it at minus 40 because it's low enough that even if we're playing very softly, it will still know that it should open, but it's not too low to the point where if you accidentally bump into the guitar and the strings ring a little bit, then the gate opens. I don't want that to happen. High enough to eliminate the errors and it's low enough to make sure that even if we're playing softly, it will still pick that up. And for me, I found minus 40 to be a good number. So let's check if this works. I'll mute the instruments. 
and as you can see everything fades away now does this have limitations yes it does of course because it's an automatic thing and i have my computer at a difficult spot to get to it's not easy to just have the crowd sound come into the live stream if there's no music playing but what i found is that i never needed to do that so the first method that i showed you in the other video gives you the most control but you have to remember to do these things every single time this method it does it for you but it restricts your control now if you have your Reaper computer at front of house and you have easy access, you can actually use the computer. That's not a problem. But I'm just speaking for those who might be like me that have the computer somewhere else that is difficult to get to. In the previous video, I said I might change some things in the future. So let me show you what I changed. First of all, I put all the instruments in a group. They were not in a group previously. And I did that because I can now just put one delay plugin on all the instruments to align them with the crowd mics instead of having the delay on every single channel. And so now now, if I move the crowd microphones to a different place and I need to change the delay, I can just change it from one place instead of every single channel. Also, it allows me to very easily do this gating thing because otherwise I would have to send every single track to that gate of the crowd and to that gate of the reverb. Now I can just send one group and that's it. Something else that I think is really important, I raised the high pass frequency on the crowd mics because I found that the mix was getting really muddy. And if these mics are not loud enough in the mix, there's not enough ambience coming from them. And if they are loud enough, they bring in a lot of low end, low mids, which sound undesirable. So I did that and instead of using a clipper, I'm just using a limiter because I wanted a cleaner sound from the crowd mics. I don't want them to distort. And then after the limiter, I'm using a EQ again. I'm cutting not all the way up like the first EQ, I'm cutting a little bit lower, but because of the amount of compression that the limiter is doing, it's bringing up again a lot of the low end that I had cut previously. So I'm cutting it again and it just cleans up the sound a whole lot. If I just make you listen to the crowd, it sounds really thin, but it's intelligible. You can hear exactly what's going on. Whereas if I don't have this, it sounds really dull. There's no intelligibility in it. So the first EQ is to not overwhelm the limiter by low frequencies. And the second EQ is to clean up these low frequencies after the limiter brought them up. And that way I can have the crowd mics fairly loud in the mix. and it adds all the ambience that I need without ruining the mix. So I'm protecting all the low end and I'm not messing with it. And of course, since I added a plugin that has latency, I compensated for that. So on the instrument group, I added 10 milliseconds because that plugin takes 10 milliseconds of time to process the audio. So I added 10 milliseconds on top of the original delay to line up the crowd mics with the instruments. So the original delay was 13 milliseconds and plus 10 because of that plugin. So it's 23 milliseconds. Same thing for the microphones, same thing for the auxiliary input. So that's any video or music playing from the computer. And something else that I did that I think is really important is on the master track. I have a compressor with a slow attack and fairly quick release. It's not doing much. At the loudest parts, it's doing around 3 dB. And then I have a clipper that is also not doing too much. In the previous video, I was doing everything with the clipper. And that's fine, but at some point, if the music gets a bit too loud, you will start hearing the distortion from the clipper. So I brought that back to half. And the other half of processing, I'm doing with the limiter after the clipper. So that clipper is clipping the very top, the very high peaks. And then the limiter is taking care of the rest. And the limiter is just doing 2, 3 dB at most at the loudest parts. So I still have the same loudness, but if I was just using a limiter, it would be too dull. And if I'm just using a clipper, it would be too distorted. So I'm just making the peaks more consistent with the clipper first to not overwhelm the limiter. And then with the limiter, I'm bringing the volume up 
to have it nice and loud. These are all the changes I made from the previous video. If you haven't watched that yet, click here on the screen to learn how to set up a live stream mix from scratch. And if you already know how to do that, click on this video right here to see how you can use a very cool camera to live stream.